This week we trek out the cards push to premiere, short treks, and knowingly not knowing some things before giving you a rundown of this week's Star Trek gaming news. Don't forget, if you like what you see and want more, be sure to subscribe to this channel and activate those notifications. And if you want even more coverage of Star Trek news, open up that podcast app and subscribe to Priority One, a Roddenberry Star Trek podcast. Priority One message from Starfleet coming in on secure channel. All right, seriously though, who's not excited for Star Trek Picard? Well, if you happen to be one of those who like to err on the side of cautiously optimistic, Sir Patrick Stewart is trying to sway your opinion. The highly anticipated not TNG sequel, Star Trek Picard, is set to air on January 23rd. And the 79-year-old Stewart had a few things to say about the upcoming series. Speaking with and posing for variety, the dapper Sir Patrick reflected on his past, present, and future, broadly outlining his life and acting highlights. In the article, Sir Patrick recalls the world Roddenberry created and the world we live in now as motivation for revisiting the legendary captain, saying, quote, in a way, the world of the next generation had been too perfect and too protected. It was the Enterprise. It was a safe world of respect and communication and care and sometimes fun. Star Trek Picard was me responding to the world of Brexit and Trump and feeling, why hasn't the Federation changed? Why hasn't Starfleet changed? Maybe they're not as reliable and trustworthy as we all thought." End quote. Sir Patrick's comments and those made of him by fellow stars Sir Ian McKellen and Jonathan Frakes are worth a look, so check out the links in the description. But if the hype-inducing interviews aren't your thing, but you still want to ramp up for the premiere, then the latest short trek may fuel your anticipation. Children of Mars, the sixth and final episode of the second season of Short Treks, serves as a prelude to Star Trek Picard, and likely humanizes Stewart's reference to Picard's, quote, errors of judgment, end quote. Over the course of just over eight minutes, we meet two young girls, one an unidentified alien named Kaima, and the other a human named Lil. Both girls have loved ones on Mars and Utopia Planitia, who, for one reason or another, seldom have the opportunity to make it back to Earth to spend time with them. Despite that shared pain, the girls misplace that anger towards one another. The tensions and bullying finally erupt into a physical confrontation. Soon after, during their detention, they discover they now have something much more in common than they thought. Mars has been attacked by what the Federation News Network calls a rogue synth attack, putting the girls' loved ones in danger. The pair hold hands and come together in the harrowing moments that follow. Now, I have to admit, this one kinda hit me in the feels. For starters, I was severely bullied growing up, and as I've grown older and reflect on those days, sure, I still hold on to some anger and resentment, but I often wonder how things could have been different. Did it make me any stronger? Then there's the strong influence of what seems to be a sort of parallel to the attacks on 9-11, another event I witnessed having grown up just across the Hudson River in New Jersey. I was in high school. I heard the explosions. Our school was on lockdown. Everyone was confused and scared. Although traumatic events tend to unite us, it's a shame that's what it takes to help us see how united we could be against things like racism, bigotry, radicalism. I also think it's a bold choice. For those of us who do remember 9-11 clearly, this does trigger some emotions. I am curious to see how these themes might be explored in Star Trek Picard. If the synths are rogue, I'd like to see how it impacts the people of the Federation, which we actually might get to explore, but more on that later. You see, the hype train is chugging so fast that CBS has officially announced that Star Trek Picard will get a second season. And according to The Hollywood Reporter, 
Their sources say that season three is also in the works. During the Television Critics Association Winter Press Tour, Julie McNamara, CBS All Access Executive Vice President, explained, quote, the energy and excitement around the premiere of Star Trek Picard has reached a magnitude greater than all of us at CBS All Access could have hoped for. We're thrilled to announce plans for a second season before the series debut, and we are confident that Star Trek fans and new viewers alike will be captured by the stellar cast and creative team's meticulously crafted story when it premieres on January 23rd." End quote. Also announced at TCA, Terry Metalis will come on as showrunner for season two, filling in the void left behind by Michael Chabon's departure. Metalis is known for his work on 12 Monkeys, Nikita, and even worked on Star Trek Voyager and Enterprise. During the event, we also heard from Alex Kurtzman regarding the setting for Star Trek Picard. CBS All Access Twitter account was live tweeting during the event. To start, Kurtzman explained, quote, The first chapter is really earthbound, which is rare for the world of Star Trek. The look, tone, and feel of the show is different by design, end quote. But where does this fall in the grand scheme of the Star Trek multiverse? Well, Kurtzman had an answer for that as well, confirming, quote, we're in the prime timeline. Events from the Kelvin timeline impacted Picard. If you look at that movie, the destruction of Romulus was in the prime timeline, end quote. So if you haven't already, be sure to get your hands on the countdown comics leading up to the 2009 Kelvin universe films. So. Perhaps if we are spending so much time on Earth in this first chapter, we will get to see the impact of galactic events on the common person in the Federation. You see, it's, it's not really often that we see the impact of galactic events like a Borg invasion or the Dominion War affecting the common person of a planet or the Federation. The stories have usually lived on the ship or the station. Plus. There's always been a lot of telling, <clears throat> Deep Space Nine, but very little showing throughout the series. Now, personally, I'm looking forward to having some boots on the ground, so to speak, and learning about how these new enemies impact the daily lives of citizens in the Federation. Now, I will say this, though. I am slightly disappointed that we're getting a second and perhaps third season for Star Trek Picard. Now, wait, 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 wait. Before you click to another video, just, just, just hear me out, hear me out for a second. What if Picard was supposed to be a limited engagement? Just one season, a swan song. This was something I speculated about over on the podcast when the series was first announced and interviews detailing its genesis were trickling out. With the success of Logan fresh in his mind, I could see a reluctant Sir Patrick being drawn into a story that would give his character a, a proper and honorable send-off in the style of today's television storytelling. Now, really though, isn't that something we kind of all want? A solid story leading up to a righteous self-sacrifice? Or do we want to risk seeing this? Whee! Sure, there's a part of me that wants all the Picard all the time. But there's also a side of me that kind of wants to temper that for a strong story that would leave me in puddles at the end, kind of like Logan. Nevertheless, additional seasons of Picard aren't the only thing up Mr. Kurtzman's sleeve. Trekor was on site during a press junket that included several of the creative minds behind the Star Trek television productions. When asked about the future plans, Kurtzman teased, quote, there are two more live action shows that haven't been announced yet." End quote. And that's it. A true tease. Who knows what's in store? But for goodness sakes, it had better be a Christopher Pike show! Anyway, let's fire up the PC and break out the table and talk about Star Trek gaming. The Borg. Star Trek Online's first end game adversary. A decade ago, you had to put together a crack team and battle the bionic baddies for the best loot and bragging rights in the Beta Quadrant. Then, much like the IP it lives in, the Borg lost something 
But if remastering the mechanical menace is your bag, then Star Trek Online has some good news for you. The Borg Resurgence featured Task Force Operations event. The third and final leg of the Tier 6 Voucher Coupon events features an updated Borg experience. Infected the Conduit for space battles, Kittimer Vortex, again for space battles, and Into the Hive for ground have all been remastered. Now, before you get nervous, content designer John Hegner explains that the team means when they say remastered. Quote, we made them more robust, updated them, added voiceovers, and improved on their presentation and mechanics to improve an even better player experience. End quote. For new players, the TFOs will scale with level. And for more advanced players, elite versions of all three TFOs have been added. As for the reward, completing the event will earn you a set of cyclical modulation ground weaponry. The Illudium Q36 Explosive Space Modulator. Heading back to the bridge, the popular VR Star Trek offering Bridge Crew is available for the Oculus Quest. Don't know what Bridge Crew is? Well, it's a cross-platform virtual reality game where you can play solo on the bridge of a starship or join three friends and take a station. Saving civilians, destroying Romulans, or running from the Borg. Don't know what Oculus Quest is? Think console VR gaming. Nothing but the Quest is needed to play. If you've already bought the game on PC and don't want to buy it again on the Quest, well, fret not because it's free. If you haven't purchased it yet, it will run you $29.99 US dollars. The team at Priority One has met up a few times to play Bridge Crew and it is so much fun. I mean, really, go over to our Twitch and YouTube channels, watch some of our live streams about it. It is a riot. And of course, we'll leave a link to the announcement and the game in our description. Of course, for a deeper dive into these headlines and more, be sure to open up your favorite podcast app and do a search for Priority One, a Roddenberry Star Trek podcast. Each week, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Kat and Anthony, to discuss the entire Star Trek multiverse, including movies, shows, and, of course, Star Trek gaming. And for even additional content, be sure to subscribe to the Roddenberry Podcast Network. Most importantly, tell your friends about this show, because, of course, it's your support that keeps us going. Priority one message from Starfleet coming in on secured channel.